afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everyone. Are we awake and alive and all here? Well, well we're here. To order of our Council of Aging meeting, August 15th, 2016. I'm sorry to say March Payne is not here, but recovering well. Daddy Hunt, Vice Chair, will run the meeting today. And I'm glad to have you all here. Uh, um, Bob Sense is not here, is but Susan has volunteered to take the notes. Thank <laughs> you very much, Susan. Oh, yeah, I'm a good volunteer. <laughs> Say it. No. no, I will. I'll okay. get to it. Okay. What? Don't just look. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> we have a quorum. Yeah. We have five of us here, so we're all set. Appreciate everybody coming. And we have some staff here, Tina and Pam, and we have some guests from the Friends, Barbara and Nancy, and we have Joe Knox from the Sox, but thank you very much for coming. And Joe Knox is now our liaison with the Board of Selectmen. Oh, wonderful. So you're going to come to every meeting? I'm going to try to, yep. Oh, very oh, good. Right. Appreciate that. Yep. And again, a reminder, the open meeting laws apply to all our meetings. And we begin with some announcements. Um, the combined ladies and men breakfast will be on August the 17th, which is a week from this, no, it's this Wednesday. So don't forget the ladies and men's breakfast. And also that same day is a legislator's barbecue. So you can come for breakfast and then come back for lunch. Or stay. <laughs> but remember, you need to sign up for this. I'm going to move down there so I can hear. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. I'll okay. try and speak up louder if I can. Camera together. I know. <laughs> well, plus the air conditioner's running. Oh, just good. remember to them. sign up for lunch. I don't know whether it's too late, but probably you can get it in today. No, you can still sign. You still sign. Thank you, Jean. You're welcome. Yeah. And remember, it is important to sign up. Okay. The minutes from the June meeting were sent out by Pam a little while ago, and I'm assuming everybody read them mm -hmm. in advance. So if you have read them, if you have any corrections or modifications, we'll hear them now. Or if you haven't looked at them, scan them quickly and then suggest or if you have any modifications or corrections, you can state them now. Otherwise, Forever we'll hold your have piece. a motion to accept. So moved. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes from June 13th accepted. Do we have a friend's report? Sure. Please come forward. Okay. Just want to say that um, the Friends Thrift Shop is having their annual $3 a bag sale this week, the 15th, uh, the week of the 15th through the 19th, and the week of the 22nd to the 26th, $3 a bag sale. I saw that advertised, yeah. Good. And um, we have a lot of good stuff, so we're hoping people come. The next thing is that we'll be closed. I want people to know that we'll be closed the 29th through the, se the 2nd of September, the 29th of August through the 2nd of September to um, empty out the shop and fill it up again with winter things. And um, I am looking for volunteers to help uh, put the clothing from the storage room into the thrift shop. I appreciate anybody who wants to come and help do that. It takes a lot of work. so. Are there hours that you really need people to come? Well, Monday through Thursday, they can come in from 9 until 3. Okay. Anytime. I mean, if even if they've got an hour or two, mm -hmm. that's fine. And then the next thing is that in September, um, in the meantime, we'll be collecting clothes for our fashion show. We're going to have a fashion show. Yay. The 14th of September. And that'll be at noon. 
Uh, actually, it starts at 1 o'clock. So we'll be doing that again, and then in October we'll have an Oktoberfest, but I don't need to tell you much more about that, okay. just that we're having it. So the big thing is the sale, that we're closed after that, and that we're going to have a fashion show. So there. Yeah. Kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you very much. I can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have any old business listed unless anybody has something they want to say about old business. Okay, we'll go on to new business. We're gonna our first is the goal discussion on additional space for the COA. And Pam's gonna address that for the moment. Well, I wanted to report back to the board if there were any members who are currently here who weren't at the joint meeting that we had with the uh, friends to discuss this. I wasn't. And at that time, we talked about um, some of the things that have been happening up to date and then also just some general needs. Um, it, it probably goes without saying that we need more space. Uh, when we go to talk to the selectmen next week, I'll have some charts for them that show the increase in the number of seniors who are attending and also the increase in the number of events that we've been doing over the last three years. Um, this coupled with the fact that we have more seniors in town and according to the state projections as found in our needs assessment, we will continue to have more seniors percentage wise. Um, as well as raw numbers right up until 2030 shows the need for more space. Uh, one of the things that I shared with the friends in that meeting um, was a meeting that was held with the library trustees, uh, park and rec, school department, Keith Bergman and me um, talking about uh, if the library were to move out of its current space, what could happen inside town hall. Um, first off, I want to say that I was really glad to be invited to that meeting because I think it was a clear statement by Keith of the importance he sees of what we do and also of our need for space. Um, at that point, we were talking about the library either choosing to rebuild on the site or to build new. Um, I believe that they're leaning more and more towards the choosing to build new because that gives them the 50% reimbursement from the state where rebuilding on site does not give them um, that kind of uh, additional money. Um, if the library builds new, then obviously that opens up a great deal of space right at the end of this building. Uh, and Keith was very clear that he thought as part of that whole project, a consultant should be hired, a neutral person, to then work on reconfiguring within this building where space should go and who should get space. He did go on record though of saying that he really felt that we, the COA, should get room 103 and that the selectmen should have a new room down in the library area. Um, and he was totally behind the idea that we need more space. Um, so I, I, I know that they're paying attention to that and of course those of you who follow the Board of Selectmen know that in the goals that they set for this coming year, there was a goal, another goal around elder and human services. This is our third year that we've made the goal list. And number one on that was to address the issue of space for us. Um, the other two um, I'll talk about when I get to the director's report uh, about the senior tax work off program um, and the Sudbury tax option. Was it feasible at that meeting to mention if the library goes and builds elsewhere to have the park and rec go over into their space and we can take the first and second floor on this end of the building. That was part of the discussion. It um, wouldn't cost that much. They didn't want to make any commitments around it. Like I said, they wanted to bring in a consultant to really talk about using the space. But, um, you know, when we were talking, we were pointing out that we just put the money into the kitchen and we definitely want to stay in right. that vicinity. I just wondered, um, as we get space, does that mean that the friends would get some more space? Because I think they need a bigger thrift shop. <laughs> I'm 
mean, really, it's so crammed. Oh, and thank you. <laughs> they do a tremendous business in it. And so as as we get more space, do they get some more space? You didn't realize, but maybe we'll ask for our own building. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, downstairs. I, I have a lovely space in, in the center of town for rent. <laughs> Barbara, is the room across from the park and rec bigger than the one you have upstairs? I, I'm not sure. Someone has mentioned that to me before. but I think it's sure. exactly the same size because same one's size. right on top Ooh, of the other. Oh, yeah. 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 There's the men's room. Yeah, I think they're the same size. Shucks. The men's room's on top of the men's room and then there's the... Yeah. But I see that as, to me, if we ever did get that side and downstairs, I see that as a welcoming room like a lot of other senior centers have. I'd rather see it... Everybody's used to the thrift shop upstairs, but I think having a nice room where people can come in and wait for someone, wait for an appointment, yeah. or I think mm -hmm. it should be a, a nice, warm, welcoming room. It's also sounds a quiet spot. Signs sounds good. Yeah. Uh, my fantasy would be that when you came through the courtyard that you would be coming into our area and that yes, Park and Rec would move down to the other end and maybe even the school department move as well. That land and back <coughs> down below, is that what they would build for the library? They're talking about that as the so-called slope option. That's one of the options. They have to present two options to the state. Um, there's a, a really nice artist rendering of that that's available on the website or, or over in the library. And the, f the um, way it would work is you'd walk across the parking lot and you'd walk into the building on the second floor. And then there would be a floor below that. That would be nice because they wouldn't touch the tennis courts, the expense of redoing all that. Well, the tennis Leave courts. Leave it as is, you know? That's nice. Tennis courts are in bad shape. <laughs> <coughs> so, so, in the meeting that we had with the friends, we came to agreement between both boards that it's really to our advantage to stay in this building. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that's really what we would ideally like to do. Um, to keep everything central. It, keep everything central, then we don't have to deal with maintenance issues and snow plowing and, and all of that. We don't have to try to find uh, someone who's very wealthy to, that's how most of these centers get built, is someone, a, a business or a person uh, makes a, a large donation. New centers cost, well, the ones I've heard about recently are five to six million dollars. What would happen? <laughs> That's just chump change, Jan. What would happen to the up and down space on this end of the building they, they're if hiring, we went over there? They're hiring somebody to figure to, that yeah, out. Yeah, right. If um, they send a consultant to look at the building as far as the offices could go here, the COA could go there, whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm probably saying uh, something that's already taken care of. Are you consulted also and are, you know, people consulted about uh, how you feel about the space you'd like to have and would the consultant think about that when they're looking at the building? The impression I got from the meeting that Keith held with everyone is that the people that were at the table would definitely be involved in that whole decision. Um, I felt like there were two things he was trying to say. One was it needed to be done. That it couldn't be just haphazard, willy-nilly, right. just move people around right, kind of right. thing. That it needed to be a planned sort of thing. And then um, that those people at the table represented the interest groups that should be represented. Park and Rec, quite obviously, they also brought along one of their commissioners. Um, school department, because they were above us at our end of the building, us clearly, and then of course the library as well. Yeah, yeah, that makes me feel bad. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> even if I were the person at the meeting, I wouldn't do that on my own. I would do that after consulting the board and various people, and you know, we'd certainly um, and go back to our needs assessment and look at what people said they want and need in terms of expansion. Who pays for that survey? That's why the whole question came up. Is Keith, I think, wanted to make sure that the cost of doing that. You talking about the needs assessment now, or are you talking about the per, the consultant? The consultant. On he wanted to make sure that that was part that we didn't overlook that in the cost of doing the library project. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
It's a reconfiguration here and, and deciding what needed to be done. Thirty-five thousand. We maintain our focus yeah. as a board that we want to stay here. Mm -hmm. so. And as the friends say, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we two boards are in agreement with that. Yes. And I, I think we need to keep that up front in our minds, you know, when we're talking to our fellow seniors. That's what we want. I mean, that's what I'm telling my senior friends. Yes. I like it here. I want to come here. It's convenient. It's a great location. It's even close to town for those of, the, those of us who can walk. Right. It makes a big difference to be here versus a little more remote place. I think this has a much more After advantage. our kitchen was done, we'll stay. Our, I have a friend who lives in Vermont, and they were up in a little town in the back of beyond, but they had taken a whole street and every building, and they weren't all in one building, but it was all municipal. This whole street was all the mun mun municipal offices and uh, buildings, and it made it, it just was so, she said, just so outstanding to her that this town had thought it out and they put them all together in a central place so you went on one street to get it all done and I feel like that's what we have that's here. We have here. Mm -hmm. um, I met this morning with David So, one of the library trustees and he was talking about how part of their proposal for that slope plan is the idea that this can become a campus that a person could come and park here and go to the library go to the Council on Aging hit town offices um, or come on the van and it certainly if you think about the walking across the parking lot that's not a long way for someone to walk to go to the library yeah. you're close to Badger too <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't actually well, thought of that as part of the complex but <laughs> full service huh hopefully none of us are close to Badger you got right it now. <laughs> Plan ahead. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I'd like to see us do a vote to support the library, a formal vote of this board to support the library building a new building and making space available in this building for us um, and, uh, and convey that to them in a letter. Um, uh, they, I think they would definitely appreciate knowing where we stand on the issue because we are one of those interested parties that comes to the table. So moved. I agree. Yeah. Well, then let's um, put on a, in front of the tables that this board make a motion to so support moved. what's on the table. That we agree with the library we support the library motion sure. remaining in this building in conjunction with the friends. Friends. Yeah. Us remaining in the building, but the library building a new building. Right. Yeah, and the library going elsewhere. I know that working our with the committees in this building to better utilize our space here. I move that we uh, support the library. You got it. Moved. You got it. Seconded. I did. In the minutes, I yeah. will take care of it, Mary. You want a second? <laughs> yes. No, you, you need a second before you can. You need a second. Right. You second it. Susan makes a motion. Barbara seconds. You Barbara second it. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Well, then we'll draft a letter and we'll send it to the committee. Thank you very much, everybody. You're welcome. You know, there's one other thing I should tell you that I know about this whole library proposal. Um, those of you with long memories may remember that we were in a similar situation with the high school, that we got a reimbursement back from the state in the building of the high school. And similarly, um, this is not an opportunity that happens every year. So if, for example, the library were to not move forward this year, I think it's by January of 2017, they have to put their proposal to the state. They couldn't just do it next year because it's not available every single year. Okay. 
So it's important that they get the support now and that they get on the list mm -hmm. to be reimbursed from the state. Then it does have to go to the town to be voted, correct? That's right. It will be coming before town meeting. Um, at their, our meeting with the selectmen next week, we'll be telling them that we voted positively to support that and uh, that we see that as part of addressing our whole space issue. What time is that selectman meeting? It starts at 7, but I don't know where we are on the agenda. So that's at 6.30. I'm not oh, sure. 6.30. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're on the agenda right now. I called the office today, and the agenda has not been, for the public hearing, it's posted, but the agenda for the meeting has not been posted yet. The public hearing starts at 7. Um, and Joe, I don't know if you have things that you want to add about the whole space discussion. No, it's just interesting that we, I guess the vote is, is, is good. I, I went to one of the meetings of the library trustees when they explained the need, which I didn't know about because I don't go to the library that often. Uh, but it, so it's obviously there. The only thing that the, the board selectman was very surprised at was it seemed like the cost almost like double from what Bonnie had worked into a budget so when debt comes off we add new debt like you know, the, the fire station will be put on and then the mm -hmm. library uh, it was almost twice as much from what we understand of what they had budgeted so we still have this question about why all of a sudden with this meeting they come up with that figure so there's a lot of things to be worked out. there's no doubt that we've been talking about space but it hasn't been confirmed yet about you know the, the library and that definitely has to go to town meeting yeah and a lot of people be watching what, what the cost actually is for that. Which leads us right Patty. into me, the joint Patty. meeting with the board. Is, oh, I'm sorry, Nancy. Yeah, well, I'm curious as to what happens at town meeting if the town votes not to do this, to not support the library. And Where? everything stays. <laughs> no, you got to think positive. They will. I don't know. Taxes are a big issue, and they were a big issue in the needs assessment. People are... I'm curious as to what happens with this space. The library is getting grants. They're working hard. Oh, I know, but the town might say no. Yeah. I think that's a good question. And a viable thought. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. If the library were to be voted down, um, I don't think there are any other viable alternatives for space for us, for sure. Can't speak for Park and Rec and what they may have looked at or the school department, but I don't think there's anything for us. Still have to look at some other uh, things going on too. The Cooper Farm, the house right there, but is that house big enough to take a, a, a town uh, department and put mm -hmm. it in that and that leave room here? So there's other things. Yeah, that that's, that's a possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there was some discussion of maybe park and rec going there. Yeah. Okay. 7.30? Seven. Seven is when the um, posted uh, public hearing starts to talk about their goals, and I know this was on the goals. So we should be there? Seven. Okay. say anything else about the selectman meeting other than being there at seven well we know why we're going to the selectman meeting any other question about it no that's number a you know as many of you as can come would be great i'll obviously be there oh i'll be there Next on our agenda is the grant for the MCOA Brains and Balance Path 60 again, which is a great program. So the MCOA, you know, offered us this grant, um, and they have now actually uh, issued us a check for $1,000, and this is just a formal vote to accept that check so that it can be placed into the account. Um, the Brains and Balance program, Brains and Balance Path 60, was so well received. It will be running again starting the last Friday in September, and this time it will run once a week until just before Christmas time. Holly's going to run it again. Uh, I really encourage people to sign up for it. Um, everyone who participated said that they felt some improvement 
and those that stuck with it felt like they had a lot of improvement confidence balance um, and a little sharper around the edges all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion approved was it moved and seconded I don't think I heard a move and seconded. no it wasn't moved and seconded no. <laughs> D new fair structure and changes Patty. to the Patty tree. we it didn't to be moved and seconded. we didn't move and second oh sorry about that that's all right motion to accept so moved seconded all in favor aye aye, aye. approved Okay, now the new structure and changes to transportation. So um, when you get the September broadcaster, which by the way will be sent to every home oh, in Wilmington. This is a, one of our signature moves in communications. Um, you'll see on page 10 that there have been some changes around uh, fares and hours and things. And this is part of the whole initiative with Crosstown Connect and Transaction to have the four towns that are currently participating in Crosstown Connect pick up people in other towns. So in order to do that, we needed to have a standardized um, schedule and standardized fare structure. So the four towns that are participating right now are Acton, Littleton, Boxborough, and Maynard. Um, and just to summarize the fare change, all the fare changes are down, by the way. There's no increase in fares. They're all down. Oh, good. Um, the agreement was made in the four towns, for example, that if you go to any medical facility in Concord, it's a dollar, oh. regardless of which town you come from. Um, if you go within our own town, it's a dollar. And then they all agreed that if we went more than 15 miles, it would be seven dollars which is what it always has been um, which includes the Boston trip and Leahy um, I have to tell you that the three other towns were very excited about the prospect of being able to participate in the Friday trips to Boston hospitals and to Leahy clinic because none of the other three towns was running trips there at all oh. so, um, I was interviewed today by someone from Mass Mobility who's writing an article about the uh, shared dispatching and the uh, uh, taking people in the multiple towns and the cooperative arrangement now between MART, Massachusetts Area Regional Transit, which is our uh, RTA, and the Lowell RTA, which controls Acton. Acton and Maynard. Maynard and Littleton. Who was the other Boxborough. one? Boxborough. Boxborough, yeah. Okay. Boxborough and Littleton are MART, Acton and Maynard are LRTA. Okay. And all the credit for making that agreement happen has to go to Keith. He's the one who really pursued it and spent time with them. He's on the board at MART and he really made it happen. It was just a, um, uh, the primary impediment was reporting and paperwork and uh, they agreed to take on that, that uh, effort. That's great. Yeah. Are all the towns participating now? Those four. Those four. Yeah. Good. And what this stops is the situation where you come out of Emerson Hospital and there's the Littleton van sitting there for the Littleton person, and there's the Maynard van sitting there for the Maynard person, and there's the Acton van sitting there for an Acton person, uh -huh. and it only needs to be one van. Oh, that's really good. Um, it just makes uh, dispatching more reasonable and it gives us increased capacity because now people could be on another van instead of me having to send somebody to Emerson to pick someone up they could jump on the Acton van well to go for one person when there's one van to pick up three people it just makes much more sense yep I mean it's, that's really good any questions on that anymore and now our new program which I'm really excited about is the rental assistance program. Um, some of this housing subcommittee plus Pam and Tina, we went to the uh, Littleton Housing Authority on August 3rd for a presentation. And the housing authority is totally on board with this as well. And this, here you want, you want to talk about it. this is the presentation, the slide presentation that Pam gave to the Housing Authority. 
Yeah. So it's excellent. Oh, thank you. In in brief, the um, the rental voucher program um, is addressing the issue of people who are in rental housing in Littleton um, who are paying uh, a large proportion of their income for rental. Um, that can happen through a lot of circumstances. Someone takes on a rental that's quite reasonable, and then they have a change. They um, retire and go to a fixed income. They lose a job, or they have some kind of a catastrophic thing like a um, car meltdown or a medical situation, and now they find themselves really strapped. Um, the program that we um, copied from just started in Boxborough on a one-year trial. They voted at town meeting to bring it forward as a, um, a program for a year to offer $250 a month to someone who qualifies as low income and um, uh, meets all of the uh, qualifying factors uh, to keep people in housing. Um, truthfully, uh, Tina and I had kind of a selfish reason for bringing this forward because if someone becomes homeless in Littleton, they become our responsibility. A person's last address is the town that's responsible for someone when they become homeless. Mm. And, uh, we'd like to forestall that and all of the other problems that come when a person loses their housing. Um, so we brought the program forward to the Littleton Housing Authority because we felt like they should join with us in presenting this. And you can see it says a joint proposal from Elder and Human Services and the Housing Authority. At the Housing Authority meeting, they did vote to support this. So we already have their support. Um, briefly, if you look at the sheet that says the need, uh, it's just what I said. Um, So-called affordable housing in Littleton is outside of the reach of a lot of people. Um, we do have some subsidized housing like 19 Shattuck Street where people pay 30% of their income towards the um, housing. Um, they have a long waiting list, difficult to get into, um, and similarly for the other two elder housings uh, in town. And there are people who don't qualify for those because they're not elderly or they're not disabled. Um, they're just financially burdened. Um, so the intent is to identify those people and help them to, uh, to deal with the housing problem. Um, the resource for this is the Community Preservation Act, um, the money for which is handled through the Community Preservation Committee, the CPC. So the Community Preservation Act was created to support these four items. Uh, open space, which we're clearly aware of, um, historic resources, you all may remember it being used for the uh, stained glass windows in one of the churches, um, outdoor recreation facilities, and uh, 13, or, um, 30, 300 Great Road received a, a lot of money from them in rebuilding that park. But the fourth one is develop affordable housing. Uh, often when people see that term, they think, oh, go out there and build affordable housing, which takes a lot of money and takes a lot of time. Um, this is a way to address the housing issue much more quickly and much more directly uh, by car making available some uh, vouchers for rental. Um, the difference between what we're proposing and Boxborough, Boxborough is paying Metro West to do all of the application process and we have the Littleton Housing Authority which has the staff and the processes in place and the experience and they've agreed that they will do that piece of it so um, they would be able to take applications from people process them and decide how to rank people so that you can choose who would be the best recipient of the money so the proposal is if you look at this page um, two hundred and fifty dollars a month for the first year paid each month to the landlord directly to the landlord doesn't go to the person it goes directly to the landlord so we know it's going for housing we would have this ranking system that would help us to select people um, the administrative work would be done by the housing authority and then we're proposing to run the pilot for a year and if at the end of the year we can look back on it and feel like it's successful we could ask CPC for funding to do it for another year is Littleton Green considered a low-income housing? 
Littleton Green is subsidized housing. It is. Yes, and you have to go through the application process. You have to fall within their guidelines, and then your rent is 30% of your income. And those kinds of places wouldn't qualify for this 215 month. Mm -hmm. No, we're talking about other places. Those places are already operating on a subsidized yeah, basis. Yeah. So we're talking about other um, rental. So this town. isn't going to put a burden on Tina or, or your office because the housing authority is going to do all of the uh, great. Very good, Susan. I'm glad you noticed that. That was one of the reasons we were so enthused about this one. <laughs> LHA signed on is when uh, Lisa Larrabee enthusiastically said that she supported this idea and that they could do the work. So you have the staff to do the work, yeah. which is the difference. Yes. Do you have any input as to the qualifications or the qualifying? You and Since this is a joint proposal, we will jointly with them. Because I was wondering why we the, need to the vote ranking would be why we need to vote on it if it really isn't our project no it's a joint proposal okay. we're, we're as the housing subcommittee we came up with this idea we feel like LHA needs to be on board and then jointly we're going to the CPC okay um, my suspicion is that the CPC would be more enthusiastic about any program that's supported by multiple boards as opposed to a, a okay. lone wolf Got coming it. to them and then if you if you ask uh, CPC or Keith what monies are available, because some of those monies are being used up for different projects. So, well, they have not made the final determination of what they're going to bring to town meeting. Um, they, the CPC has told us that that hasn't happened yet, so we can still be considered. And I yes, I have talked to Keith about it. I have talked to Keith about it. He yeah. thinks that it's, it has merit. Um, this fourth leg of the four pieces of CPC, mm -hmm. uh, or the CPA, the act, this fourth leg is one that we're quite weak on. So I would think that we would get at least some consideration for helping them to. Uh, I think it's wonderful what you proposed, Liz, a lot of great thoughts gone into it. I just want to make sure that there's money that hasn't already been promised to buy pieces of land or something like that, that you know, there are funds, funds there to do this. That's my well, nothing's in nothing set in concrete until it's voted by town meeting in November. Yeah. I mean, CPC can put forward their suggestions, but it has to be voted at town meeting. So nothing's committed at this point for this year's set of funding. Um, Bartlett Harvey, who is the representative from LHA yeah. to the um, CPC, is fully in support of this. And uh, says that this is the right time of year to bring it forward to them. Good. Yeah. Uh, and also, Andrew San Marco told me that it was the right time of year to bring it forward. So then, if you look at the cost, um, we would be asking for uh, just a little over $30,000. $30,000 would go directly into the rental program, and then uh, 2000 100, which is 7%, would be the administrative fee. That's what uh, Boxborough is paying to uh, Metro West to do the uh, admin work. So we'd pay that to the LHA. Um, and then the idea is to um, evaluate at the end of one year and see what we think. The nice thing about doing a pilot is you're not committed to it. It's, you know, it's not like we're asking for $300,000 and we want a commitment of five years with $300,000 every year. Um, and these success factors for the evaluation would also be jointly developed by the housing subcommittee um, of this board and the LHA. So the steps, and that's the last slide, um, we've already been to LHA. They voted to uh, approve this and support it. I'm asking for this board to also vote to approve and support it, or I guess this, the housing subcommittee is asking for this board mm -hmm. to vote and support it. Um, and then a proposal will be presented to the CPC, the Community Preservation Committee. Um, if they accept it and then put it forward, it still would go to a vote at town meeting in November um, because town meeting has the final say on how CPC spends its uh, funding. And the intent would be to start the program next July. Great. 
So the vote to this board is a motion. I move that we um, support the Littleton Rental Voucher Program in conjunction with the uh, Littleton Housing Authority. Seconded. Okay. And the community. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So I think this is a good one. Subcommittee of this board will have to get together and do their proposal. Yeah, that's the next that piece. That includes Mary Picard, Mary Catalano, Mary Hunt. Mary, Mary, Mary. <laughs> and Bob says. <laughs> The, the, Mary, <coughs> the Marys and Bob will have to get together to do that. So it looks like a very, and the fact that the housing authority folks will do the paperwork is even better. <laughs> I think that's great. They said they were excited that we were going to do all the legwork. <laughs> yeah, we do the legwork and they do the paperwork afterwards. <laughs> that's okay. That's no problem. Okay, we're on to reports. Uh, budget report. Now, Bob's not here, so you'll just have to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty, you know, we've read it over the year, over the years, so we know all about them. Yeah, it's pretty skinny this time of year since it's just July. <laughs> it's just July. You know, be easy. We're all set. Drivers, dispatchers, so that, you know, it's pretty simple. And then I also included the um, total year from the fiscal year that just ended because we didn't meet in um, July. Um, but Bob, because he was away, didn't have the June figures, so they don't they don't show on there. So anyway, that's not too bad. It was looks good. Needless to say, we spent all our money. <laughs> and then we have uh, Pam's director's report. Which I believe is right behind Tina's outreach report. Mm -hmm. So um, I started by pulling together some statistics. Um, I shouldn't let you look at this. Can you guess what the average daily attendance was for us last year? This is bodies through the door on an average for every single day that we were open. I can read it. <laughs> 33. That's good. Which I thought was a great, great number. That's um, a lot of people. That's a lot of people, yeah. And granted, we had some days that were really big. Thursdays typically ran um, more like 67 or 70 because of the exercise groups, the special lunch. No wonder we need space. <laughs> Where do we put all these people? Oh, very good question, very good question. And the computer class. And the computer class, right. Um, so Tuesdays and Thursdays are our big days. Um, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Tuesday was the, the bigger day over Thursday. Uh, total attendance for the year, 14,000 visits from 674 individuals. Wonderful. So out of 1,800 seniors in Littleton, one in three came through our door. Yeah. That really goes to show heavy attendance in this little bit of space. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. And that includes people who came not just for fun kinds of things, but people who came for services. Services. And exactly. that's the piece to really keep in mind. You know, Tina sees a lot of people. Um, you know, we do the fuel assistance applications, help people with uh, food stamps, the tax program that we help people with, um, filling out their taxes. So we get a lot of people through the door for mm -hmm. a lot of things. And that's information that's not really known in the community. I don't think it's known in the townhouse, in all honesty. Yep. When we did the needs assessment, people said that they didn't know about mm -hmm. a lot of the services that we had have to offer. And that doesn't include transportation, because those people didn't come through the door. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So on top of that, the 500 rides that we do each month is in addition to that. Um, the rest of the report you can certainly read through. Um, senior tax work off kicked off. Uh, and there are the statistics. And on the back page then, um, transportation. Uh, a bit of a dip for July, 434 rides. Um, 
but that's to be expected in the the uh, summertime. Yeah, it's not all that different from 16 and 15. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it holds steady. Yeah. yeah, we are uh, pretty much maxed out on what we can do in terms of transportation without a another vehicle and another set of drivers. Any news on that? Well, um, we will be getting a new van, but it won't be a third van. It will be a replacement for our second van, and then our second van will become the um, spare so that we won't have any downtime. I talked with Keith about this, and we'll be able to hang on to the uh, blue van, and then if anything's in the shop, we'll have a van to go to because we've had a little bit of downtime, and that's always a... It's very disruptive for people because, of course, um, even planned downtime is disruptive because it means we can only put one van on the road. How many seats in the uh, small the blue van? Uh, it seats seven and a wheelchair. And so now we'll go to 14 and two wheelchairs. Would one be available any time for small trips? Uh, and you know, that's actually something we should talk about because if we could pay the cost of the driver, there's no reason why we couldn't do a small trip. You know, you know if, even using the big van if we have a driver on Saturday or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the issue is covering the cost of the driver. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, you know, Mark gives us sixty-eight thousand dollars. Last year, we spent every dime of that. Um, well, I used some formula grant money to cover driver salaries. Um, it's a a juggling game to keep us within that budget. Uh, it really doesn't cover more than two drivers a day. But if, for example, you wanted to do a trip on Saturday and everybody paid five dollars. You could cover the cost of the driver's time, yeah. and that would work. So we could talk about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, as the director, um, at this meeting that we're going to next week with the Board of Selectmen, um, if you haven't had a chance, you might want to take a look at the goals that they've laid out for the year. Um, I mentioned this earlier that uh, for the third year in a row now, Elder and Human Services has made the goals list, which means that the Board of Selectmen are thinking about us and they're focused on our needs. And they have three goals under um, uh, Elder and Human Services. The first is space, which obviously we'll be talking about. The second is they plan to increase the amount that's available through the tax work-off program. They're going to put it before town meeting that rather than it be 55000 like it's been for the last three years, that it be bumped to 80000 And what this will mean is that tax workers will have uh, more money available to uh, be applied as an abatement to their taxes. It was 841 last year, I think, I saw in the town report book. Tax people. Page after 841? No. Yeah. No, that's no. that's not what Doesn't it was. Doesn't sound right. It was 640, I believe. Really? Okay. Uh, the number has been fairly stable in terms of the number of people who sign up. Um, as the minimum wage has gone up, people have worked fewer hours to get essentially the, the same amount of money. Uh, um, uh, the, the departments have suffered a bit, though, because they haven't had people for as many hours because of the change in the minimum wage, which we have to work at. What was number three? I haven't gotten to that. So the third item, <laughs> sorry, Mary, we're, we're uh, lagging behind you here. The third item is something called the Sudbury tax option. And it's been discussed in this meeting before. Um, essentially, Sudbury worked very hard, and I firmly believe in emulating towns that do the hard work. Um, Sudbury worked very hard to put a program together. They took it to the state legislator and got the legislature to say, yes, you can do this. And they were offering and are offering a program that addresses the issue of seniors in a town where the value of the property goes up, 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 which means that the property taxes go up, 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 but you have seniors who are frequently on fixed income and their income is not going up, up, up. So the Sudbury plan was to um, take people who qualify for Circuit Breaker. So the Circuit Breaker is a state program 
that provides a either a refund or a cash payout related to income from the state but you have to fall within the income and asset guidelines that they lay out take people who qualify for circuit breaker and then apply some further means testing to them to give them some property tax relief in Sudbury you had to be um, over 65 you had to have lived in the property for 10 years and when you apply your circuit breaker your income taxes still needed to be more than 10 percent of your income they put that as the target of what they thought was reasonable for people to pay um, as part of their income towards property tax um, they further put some limits on it around um, uh, you know everyone wants predictability with the budget so they put some limits on what percentage of the property tax bill would go up for the people who are paying for this program and the first year was a half percent and the year after that was one percent and the third year was one percent so it's a it's a shift a burden shift in the program you have um, you know, 4,000 people who pay taxes in the town you identify the most needy people maybe 200 who are suffering from property tax issues and what relief they receive from property tax is then apportioned out to the other people that's the half percent so I believe the first year in Sudbury people paid I want to say fifteen dollars extra on their tax bill to support the program and then the second year I believe it was thirty uh, dollars more but it was entirely predictable and very clear to people first of all how much they were paying and second that it was going for the neediest people in town and those really in need of the program as I said they took it to the state legislature um, they approved it and um, I meet, emailed to all of you no I haven't emailed to you yet but I will email to you there was a report out after the first year of what the experience was like for them uh, I have not seen a report for the end of the third year but I do know that they went back to the legislature and asked them to do it for three more years and it passed and was signed by Charlie Baker um, I think in February or March so obviously the program must have been successful by many counts or it never would have been passed a second time and uh, I believe there was only one minor change that they made in how the program was administered isn't this basically what Chris Simone, uh, Simone was talking about? That yeah, Henry Crystal and Chris Simone brought it up at one point. Yeah, uh, it, it's not it's not new. Um, granted, three years ago it was new mm -hmm. because Sudbury was just starting just with it. Started. Now they've got three years of track record on it. Um, I have raised it a couple of times with the Board of Selectmen and with the FinCom in my annual budget meeting with mm -hmm. them, but they have been. Um, there have been some some members of those boards that were loath to go forward because of the shift that it is raising the taxes of other people but it looks like the board of selectmen now have some appetite for at least discussing mm -hmm. that shift how is this different from our tread program other than that tread is a donation program tread is a donation program so it makes no change in other people's taxes there's no shift okay the tread program just makes money available that then is used yes, to help people with, um, with tax issues. We also have the tax ref deferral program where they don't pay taxes until the deceased or sell the property. That's right. I had a little article I thought was interesting that they are, are working on it. I don't think it's been approved, but they're raising the money necessary from 55000 to 80000 and then afterwards no no they that's, pay the, 8 that's the senior, that's the senior tax work off program that's confused that article's in, incorrect that's confusing I don't know you have it then <laughs> I don't, did that come from the independent no uh, son I think yeah they, they're conflating the two programs together the oh this is something at the house so Littleton has both the tax work-off program which 
last year we voted fifty-five thousand dollars for, and is they're going to propose to to raise that to eighty thousand. And then we also have the tax deferral program, which was a state program that we picked up on. Right. And if you'll remember at town meeting last year, the Board of Assessors brought forward in conjunction with this board to reduce the interest rate on the deferral program. Um, and the deferral program says that if you enter into that program and you qualify, that you don't have to pay your taxes or you can pay a portion of your taxes until the property is sold uh, or changes hands and uh, and then you pay off at that time. I'm sorry to say though that there are no people who have taken advantage of that program and the suspicion is that people don't want to lean against their property. With the Sudbury option there's no lien involved. It's just a... Um, but with the Sudbury rate. you're going to people that were who are building a fire department and who, who we want to build a library and we're asking them now to pay more taxes even though it's incremental to support other people not having to pay taxes. You forgot the highway department's in there too. I know well, I'm number six in on there, the list. <laughs> number six. Yeah, the fifty-five to eighty thousand here is the income that a person over sixty-five can earn and still be eligible for a deferral. So they're making a change in the state basic around the tax deferral program. But it says the measure still needs further approval. No, I don't chambers. know the date Before on that article. I it may, and that's just that's just being discussed. That hasn't been passed. Mm, okay. You can give this back to her, Jean. Thank you. So I, um, Bonnie and uh, Kathy Miller and I are working to pull together a, a one-pager for the selectmen. Um, I don't know if you'll be discussing it at your meeting next week, but you'll be getting it for your meeting next week to talk about the Sudbury option. Okay. Um, and, uh, and see if we can go forward. But Susan, you raised a very good point. That with all the other issues, alumni field and everything, um, people may not be real enthusiastic. You know, in, in a great time when we don't have all, uh, I just, what I hear out in the community is taxes. Taxes are horrible in Littleton. And, uh, you know. Now, I did hear about a, a really interesting program down in Philadelphia. Um, called the loop program which was the long-term owner occupancy uh, program um, intended to help people who were in just the situation that we've been talking about you live in a town you've been there 10 15 20 years when you bought into the town the value of the home was here now the values are rising the taxes are rising but again as time has passed you now are on a fixed income um, and in the Philadelphia program, it was a 10-year program. If you qualified for it, it would freeze your taxes, your property taxes for that 10 sounds years. Good. <laughs> it sounded very, very interesting to me. Obviously, you have to qualify. You had to be, you know, over 60. You have to have lived in the house. Um, I believe for them it was 10 or 15 years. You had to obviously own it and and occupy it it wasn't for someone who owns a house and moves away um, and then the taxes would be frozen for 10 years and uh, rather than the portion of taxes that you don't pay being reapportioned that portion would just be out of the levy limit and wouldn't be available for the selectmen to spend <laughs> um, sounds good and that's an interesting proposal to consider if we can't get something like the Sudbury proposal passed by people. Uh, we can make the, the rules for it as stringent as we wanted. We can say you have to be here 20 years rather than 10. Mm -hmm. You can put the income limits wherever you want. Um, they chose the standard um, uh, HUD guidelines for low income. Um, and. And what they were fighting in Philadelphia was what happens in neighborhoods when you have gentrification. So you have someone who's a long-term resident, they've been there 20, 25 years, suddenly the property next door to them turns over, it's purchased by 
people like Tina and me <laughs> who fix it up and the taxes go through the roof. So. Okay. Good discussion. Yes. Good things to think about. Very yes. interesting. Tina? You're up. Our outreach coordinator. Tina has all kinds of goodies for you. Oh, Tina, aren't you aren't we lucky? The first report is the annual shine numbers um, for you know the shine program. They are uh, somewhat lower than the numbers I collect because I do some work for Bob in between the visits with faxing and helping people with some of the applications that come in. The second report just got at the end of last week. It's the comparison numbers for the fuel. Sorry, give you all those for the fuel assistance program for SMOC, that particular fuel assistance program, and they'd like to just let us know, you know, you know our numbers, um, you know, for the the past year. And, and maybe for the benefit of the audience, you could just tell what what the number of people were that were served with Shine, and the okay. um, number of that. fuel mm -hmm. assistance clients. Okay. Which were? Okay. I just both of them. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The, the total appointments were 64. Unduplicated were 60 for 115 hours of Shine uh, information. Um, and we should point out that that's all volunteer time. Right, that's all, yeah, that's all volunteer time uh, provided by Bob Selling, a Minuteman Shine counselor for many years. And with Littleton, um, there were 101 clients eligible and 101 clients served same number for a total of um, $54,250.61 in fuel assistance through that particular program. We have other fuel assistance programs too besides this one. And already the applications have been coming in for recertifications, so I'm getting calls now and just starting to make appointments on people who would like to apply for fuel assistance again but feel they need a little bit of help copying and updating their information. We still have many that once they're trained once, they know how to do their own going forward, and I would say half the people end up doing that on their own the second year after they've applied. You know, it's interesting if you look at the numbers for a city like Maynard, that they only had 76 people who qualified and we had 101. Yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, in order to get smock, you have to hit some very stringent and low income guidelines. People over and over say Littleton's a wealthy community. It is for some. And remember, the needs assessment found that uh, 38 percent of the seniors over 65 who are living alone are living on less than $25,000 oh, yeah. a year. Got 141 in active. And I'm surprised that many people qualify. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Oh, this is good. Thanks. I have an extra June. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I had an extra one in my packet, too. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, um, and for the summer, all the support groups have been uh, going along uh, well. Uh, that would be um, the social anxiety support group, the caregivers monthly support group, and the living alone and living well. I have some good news for the living alone and living well uh, group. We've been playing with a lot of different times, which has a lot to do with the group growing and us needing a room that can accommodate everybody. Well, with um, Thursday opening up, Thursday morning, we can go back to our original time and uh, in room 233 on the third Thursday of every month from 1030 to 1130. And I believe that worked for almost everybody. Um, there might have been a tight squeeze for some people that had to run somewhere else afterwards, but that's going to work out well, and that will begin in September. We're meeting this week, and we're meeting in room uh, 233, but from the 1 to 2 slot. We're going back to the 1030 to 1130 slot, which um, we had that slot for over three years, and it seems like it's a, it's a 
better way for people to have that set third Thursday at that set time from 10.30 to 11.30. Uh, there will be no August caregiver support group meeting for August. We're just taking the first break we've ever had in two, over two years. And then in September, we have Jennifer Cook coming uh, from the atrium at, at Drum Hill, and she's going to be our, our host and presenter for the evening. And that will begin again back in September, the last Wednesday of the month, down in the diner. I'm getting a couple of new members uh, in there. So we look forward to another year of those groups going on. Uh, finishing up the farmer's market coupons, um, which Minuteman Senior Services uh, co you know, coordinates and we distribute those farmer's market coupons. We were fortunate to have some additional support from the friends of the Littleton Council on Aging for some people who didn't qualify but still had serious need to get fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, let's see. And um, um, thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, um, are working we lost a couple of senior tax workers through moving out of town and we're looking to replace them and I still have a few pending a few have already been assigned to other departments but we're hoping outreach will have a couple more senior tax workers to work in you know friendly visiting food shopping assistance uh, occasional ride when uh, transportation isn't able to come through so I'll, I'll know more are you going to be able to have another intern like you had last year well you know I was able to uh, benefit from the Northeastern uh, student Students that we had over the summer mm -hmm. and they were great they were able to help with um, the new veterinary assistance program that we have mm -hmm. I never really had a chance to get a brochure off the ground or an appropriate application and they were able to do both wow. um, for me and and you know streamline it so it's easier to use we've had two clients successfully use um, you know the program yeah. and have received benefits from it and we have ten applications total that are out not all of those have come back to me yet but it looks like everybody who's coming back is is approved for some sort of assistance yeah. and Pamela had mentioned that we will be having uh, students come through Northeastern on a regular uh, basis uh, but uh, uh, this year I won't have a Salem State College intern but the year after okay. uh, perhaps I will again and I, so I was thinking of Courtney right I know it I Courtney. know <laughs> and that's like you know what Pamela and I talked about she was you know so valuable in many areas and one area in particular she was great at was those fuel assistance applications that can get really long sometimes with extra documents and that sort of thing. So we were fortunate to have a very paperwork um, educated uh, senior tax worker who's willing to help me during the oh, heavy good. times with that. So I'll have some assistance with that again this winter like uh, Courtney helped me with this past season. So I think that's about it unless anyone has any Have questions. you had any uh, people requesting are you okay to call them I I haven't no, no I I haven't okay, okay. you have a guy that you were going to pass out or something oh so <laughs> this guide business it's, it's the same it's all yeah. started right so I, I received this guide a guide for board members from Emma Schmarzo at the state Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, they've updated the guide. So I sent it out to everybody, and I printed copies and yeah, put holes in them for everybody to put into your book. And then I discovered that you guys already have this. Yeah. So, yeah, you actually have an, a more updated, updated one. They yeah. sent out an old one. <laughs> so uh, never mind. Ignore. <laughs> never mind. Okay, does anybody have anything else or open discussion they want to talk about before? Oh, we need an, um, we have the kitchen. kitchen. Oh, yeah, the senior diner in the kitchen. That's right. We don't want to forget our kitchen. No, or our bingo. <laughs> well, we, we've had a new um, fluorescent light added this Ooh. week over the sink and some new plugs along the wall where our cabinets are going to go. <clears throat> and that's a big improvement. Um, but um, we... Um, have have had some really good um, donations from the the farmers uh, produce uh, nice. you know community on, uh, farm comes in on Wednesdays and we use it for great salads on Thursdays and it goes to it Fridays um, le beautiful lettuces beautiful heads of lettuce uh, zucchinis and carrots and just just everything it, it's really a good good addition 
That's and the Littleton Community Farm, which Littleton. is up behind the um, Neff, the old Prouty place. Yeah. And it was the Rotary that paid for us to get two CSAs from them, and we pick it up every week. Mm -hmm. And it is beautiful it stuff, is. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Blemish-free, just <clears throat> beautiful vegetables. Wonderful. And um, our Thursday program, we want to, um, you know, get some more um, advertising on our Thursday program, which is a home-baked, home-cooked meal. Um, uh, we had a turkey dinner one day. We have homemade soup and salads and desserts. Um, oh, I thought we had to vote twice. All for three dollars. <laughs> so it's, a, it's oh. the best deal in town. Bye bye. And we uh, would like to have some more people come. As she whips out the door, we can vote to accept all the reports. Yes. So, so moved. <laughs> Second to accept, accept all, all the reports. reports. So moved. So yeah. moved. <laughs> Proved. Died. There we go. Now we've lost our core. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's it. We're working on the Thursday program. It's it's a great dinner, a great lunch. It is. And, um, it is. We need it to get the, the word out. And it's fun. So. Yeah. That light made all the difference in the world, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Light over the sink. It certainly it does. does. Yeah. yeah. It's great. There was a small amount of money left over after we finished with the contractor in the kitchen. So we've been doing some small projects, some additional electrical outlets, a light over this, the sink, looking for a new faucet uh, and a new refrigerator. You know, there was a, an, uh, an article in this morning's paper about, um, well, Keith Bergman it showed his picture and he was in a, a, a meeting at the state. Um, and several bills were signed um, and now I'm one of the things and the things were to make things easier for town managers and mayors from from the state and one of the things that caught my eye was that now um, the threshold is fifty thousand dollars for uh, to send something out to bid uh, rather than 35 yeah it used to be 35 yeah yeah <laughs> so if only. <laughs> if only. <laughs> well, we have a nice kitchen that's it's beautiful. It's legal. So it's getting there. Yeah. It's getting it's there. It's legal. So. Well, wonderful things come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the meeting's adjourned at 2.45. Yay. We need a motion and a vote for that. Mary. Joe, have you got anything to say? No, just going back, if I can, to talk about the space that you need, and then, then you talk about taxes, how to get taxes down. We've got to be careful on this library situation to make sure that we can pay it and keep it within the levy. That's the thing. Taxes are going, you hear about it all the time, I hear about it all the time. Taxes go up anyway because you have to pay for wages and pensions and everything else. Right. But we try to keep everything else within the levy so we don't have any big tax increases. Now with the with the fire station, with some things coming off our debt, it's high school, good. High school's coming off. High school, then the, the, the fire station goes on. And then what we try to do is, is, is keep that. And Bonnie does a great job with it. So we keep everything under the levy so we don't have to have a tax override. And that's what we have to be careful with live. We've got to have plan this carefully so, so it gets done. I mean, if, if we can do it and it opens up space, it's tremendous for everybody. But it's, I don't know whether we can fit it in the time span they want it. So this, these are some of the things that are being determined now. You know, we don't, we haven't had a tax override in town where people have more about increased taxes on the override situation in 10 years. I think it was about 10 years ago, in 2005, we had a tax override. We mostly had to do with the, with the uh, schools. Schools, and, uh, and so they'll vote for that. They'll vote for schools. Yeah, it, it, like you said, man, it has to go to the town meeting. Yeah. So, now, there's a lot of ifs about it, so we have to. Matter of fact, I'm going down to see Bonnie now to find out. Hopefully, she's in so I can find out some, some, some more information about the figures. There, so. I was reading one town that needed more revenue was thinking of making the town employees, because the health insurance keeps going up and up, that the employees pay more into it. 
than they do now. That's so, happening so in that the corporate taxes America. <laughs> can uh, go down a little. Well, that was brought up by members of the Finance Committee. Yeah. In the, in the past, I mean, some of it's contractual too. Some, right. Some of the contracts yeah. say that you, you have to pay this amount of this percentage, but we were actually higher than that. So that's that's a thought. That's right. We, we got a really good finance department and a really good finance committee. That you do. Yeah, we should be thankful of that because they, they, they're thinking about all those things like that. And I thank you. I have plenty of information. I can <laughs> hopefully I can meet at these meetings because, to be quite honest, the board select when we get the town is more busy now as other men. Yeah. And we have those goals, and sometimes something else comes up, something else comes up, and you go back and say, oh my God, we haven't got to that yet. So by me being here and coming back and even making a small report, and this is what some of the things that you were talking about is going to be helpful. Some of the other board members are attending different meetings. Good. So, so we, we can try So to more liaisoning between yeah, it's, us. It's just, yeah, there's that's no intentions of leaving any of those goals out, but every year something doesn't Sort of done. like your personal bucket list, and it, 10 it, years it, later you go, oh, I was going to do that. What happened to that? Oh, well. <laughs> so I think you know, I'll be here Thank for the next one. Thank you, Good. For coming. Oh, thank you for coming. Why are we still now? I will make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so moved. Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I thought we couldn't vote once we didn't have a quorum. You know, it just occurred to me how do you adjourn a meeting if your quorum runs out the